Tuesday, October 29th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, a food bank CEO suggests welfare cuts may spark riots. While Obama's affordable health care increases insurance premiums 539%. And government schools teach individual wants are less important than the nation's well-being and government commands must be obeyed by all. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight, food bank CEO suggests welfare cuts may spark riots. The CEO of the largest food bank in America has suggested that planned cuts in food stamp benefits set to take effect on Friday could spark riots. Margaret Purvis, the president and CEO of the Food Bank for New York City, told Salon.com, if you look across the world, riots always begin typically the same way, when people cannot afford to eat food. On November 1st, an expiration of stimulus funds will result in a $5 billion cut to food stamp benefits, the equivalent of one week of food taken off from poor families every month. Could we see riots, looting? Well, that's certainly what Homeland Security has been preparing for, and even the mainstream media is speculating that all hell could break loose on Friday. As we saw earlier this month, just hours of EBT card downtime resulted in mini riots and looting at several Walmart stores. Moving on, feminists are angry at Russell Brand for calling a woman beautiful. Feminists are angry at comedian Russell Brand over a recent New Statesman editorial in which Brand referred to a woman as, quote, beautiful. Although most of the debate centered around Brand's call for a revolution, Salon.com's Natasha Leonard said she couldn't bring herself to jump on the Brand wagon because the actor's framing of women is nothing short of the most archetypal misogyny. That's what she said. And what misogynistic thought crime did Brand commit? He wrote that he agreed to do the editorial because he was asked by, quote, a beautiful woman. Emmeline Pankhurst rolls in her grave. But in all seriousness, again, it's another example of cultural Marxism. While women in foreign lands are being stoned to death and seriously oppressed in a myriad of different ways, feminists like Leonard are more concerned about a comedian using a complimentary word to describe the fairer sex. While on the subject of feminism and cultural Marxism, this is an absolutely shocking story. EU set to monitor intolerant citizens. A frightening proposal currently being considered by the European Parliament would direct governments to monitor citizens deemed intolerant and could even lead to a ban on all criticism of Islam and feminism. According to the Gatestone Institute, the statute represents an unparalleled threat to free speech and would have the impact of effectively shutting down the right to free speech in Europe by banning all critical scrutiny of Islam and Islamic Sharia law. But what's equally shocking, I think, about this document is it also mandates re-education programs for juveniles who commit the crime of intolerance. It also directs governments to pressure the mass media into devoting a percentage of their broadcast hours to tolerance brainwashing. And if you think that it's too ludicrous to even get past the EU parliament, recall that back in 2001, the EU passed a law which banned criticism of its own institutions. That's right, they outlawed criticism of themselves. So it makes perfect sense that they would, again, in the name of tolerance, which is any kind of free speech critical of Islam, feminism, which are political religious doctrines, have nothing to do with hate speech. They're really trying to ram this through. Section four of the document actually states, there is no need to be tolerant to the intolerant. This is especially important as far as freedom of expression is concerned. So in other words, stamping out intolerance, which again is criticism of political or religious doctrines, trumps the free speech rights of millions of European citizens. This is a threat to free speech across the entire continent. And again, it looks like it's going to be implemented by the crazy, ludicrous EU. Rate shock. Obamacare causing 539% increase in health insurance costs for Texans, reports Mike Adams. It's been widely reported that Obamacare would, on average, increase costs 99% for men and 62% for women. Well, how about a 539% increase? 
A couple in Texas received a letter from Humana informing them that their $212 premium would be going up to $1,356 a month as a result of Obamacare. And they still have the temerity to call it the Affordable Health Care Act. Google reportedly building more floating structures outside Bay Area, reports CBS. After first being spotted building something on a barge off Treasure Island, Google has now apparently started work on a second identical barge outside the Bay Area in San Francisco. So what secret tech project are they working on now? Well, best estimates suggest that it's some kind of promotional gimmick to market Google Glass, the wearable smartphone that represents a bridge to the next level of trendy transhumanist high-tech serfdom. However, it appears as though the product launch has been delayed. Is that because Google Glass is being banned everywhere from movie theaters to cars to banks? Are they desperately searching for a compromise to counter this? We'll certainly find out soon, but the, uh, the tech giant Google again involved in more mysterious, expensive, secretive projects. Finally, school teachers' kids, commands of government officials must be obeyed by all. A question on a school exam teaches children that the commands of government officials must be, must be obeyed by all. That's a direct quote from the test paper, and you can see it up on screen now. Notice the question below as well. The wants of an individual are less important than the well-being of a nation. This is completely insidious. Collectivist, common core programs brainwashing your children that government is God. The test was actually produced by a company called Pearson, which is a major contractor for the federal No Child Left Behind program. And of course, remember the MSNBC piece, your children belong to the community, not their parents. Well, here you see what the community wants. They want your children to grow up believing that they're bricks in the wall of a collectivist totalitarian tyranny. And uh, Ron Paul wants 25% of American kids to be homeschooled. And this is yet another shining example of why you need to get your children out of the public re-education system. That's it for the news, but stay tuned for more special reports on this Tuesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com.
www.thepatriotmedia.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Now we're going to go to Gigi Anetta with another installment of Tyranny Watch. And with the White House still denying that they knew the healthcare.gov website would be a train wreck, it's now emerged that Michelle Obama's Princeton classmate is a top executive at the firm which built the Obamacare website. I'm Gigi Ernetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. Well, if you follow the money trail, you can always find the corruption. So the healthcare.gov money trail leads to the White House, Michelle Obama. So I guess this time the administration cannot say that they know nothing. Michelle Obama's Princeton classmate, Tony Towns Whitley, is a top executive at the company that earned the contract to build the failed Obamacare website. CGI Federal earned the no-bid contract to build the $678 million Obamacare enrollment website. Now, there are records of Tony's visits to the White House, which show she visited several times, but three of the afternoon meetings held in the old executive office building were scheduled in advance and one, Friday, April 26th, was not. Three of the meetings were held on Friday and one on Saturday. So before the White House denial begins yet again, Michelle Obama does actually know Tony Towns Whitley. They cannot deny it. And another notch in the Obamacare scandal. During the House hearing on Obamacare implementation today, Ms. Tavener, the representative for CMS, admitted that yes, she does believe that the people who lost their insurance, the ones who received the letters from their insurance company saying that they would be dropped, were mostly small business owners and individuals who purchased their own insurance, such as freelancers. And Ms. Tavener also said that the new deadline for the health care glitches to be worked out of the healthcare.gov site was November 30th. But why does the government always wait to the last minute on everything? The Farm Bill HR 2642 was supposed to be addressed, but here we go again, waiting till the last minute to find out if the deadline will actually get met. So will we have riots on Friday? Fight the tyranny, sign up at prisonplanet.tv today and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Now, here's Leanne McAdoo with a special review of Almost Human, a new show which promotes transhumanism as well as robot cops, and how human labor is already well on the way to being completely supplanted as we move towards the technological singularity, fulfilling the predictions of people like Ray Kurzweil and Ted Kaczynski. Have you been wondering how frightening the future is gonna be post-singularity? Well, a new pro-transhumanism TV show hopes to sell you on the idea of a world filled with robots. Almost Human takes place in 2048 LA, where detectives are forced to partner with synthetic, combat-ready androids. The droids have a strictly rule-based sense of reason, which is of course a trait that's perfect for combat and controlling the useless herd. But after their strict robo-logic botches a raid, Detective John Kennix destroys his partner and is reassigned to Dorian. Dorian is a different kind of robot, an older model that was decommissioned when their human-like qualities began to interfere with their purpose. And since Dorian is such a likable robot, it forces the audience to consider what does it really mean to be human? I can't say that I was born, but I was made to feel. And I do, as much as you. Don't think a robot with human-like qualities is possible? Well, Google futurist Ray Kurzweil says this is probably going to happen before the end of the century. We're going to become increasingly non-biological to the point where the non-biological part predominates and the biological part is not that important anymore. In fact, the non-biological part, the machine part, will be so powerful it can completely model and understand the biological part. So even if that biological part went away, it wouldn't make any difference because the, the non-biological part already understood it completely. Kurzweil also predicts that humans will be uploading their brains to computers by 2045. However, when Kurzweil talks about we, he's not talking about you or I, he's talking about the 1%. 
He admits in his book such technology will not be available to the general public and instead will be controlled by a technocratic elite who will attempt to become super beings by merging with machines. This dystopic future will see the mass of humanity trapped in their limited organic bodies, while the elite will become vastly more intelligent due to cybernetic brain interface upgrades. People involved in unskilled labor will become unnecessary when their jobs are replaced by machines, inevitably leading to the mass of humanity being seen as worthless parasites by the elite who will either prevent them from reproducing via mass sterilization programs or simply slaughter them outright. You think your job is safe? Well, they're even replacing your everyday sign spinner with robotic mannequins. But you still don't think the elite are planning to cull the useless herd. Well, in addition to forced vaccinations and GMOs destroying second and third generations, schools are now teaching population reduction as a way to save the planet. We reported in March on the Chinese eugenics factory that collects genius DNA to breed enhanced people. While Americans show some reservations with playing God, According to one of the geniuses selected for the program, the Chinese are all about breeding superior humans. And Google just announced Calico, a new company whose ultimate purpose is to radically extend the human lifespan. For those who can afford it, of course. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. And if you're watching this on YouTube, which a lot of people do, you can actually get access to this as it's broadcast on the day it goes out if you subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Still for the low price of $5.95 a month, you can share your passcode with up to 10 people. And not only do you get exclusive high quality access to the nightly news, you get live video streaming of the Alex Jones radio show every single day as well as access to uh, a multitude of different special reports, speeches, behind the scenes footage, special events. And of course, it all goes to support this network. Without you, we'd, we would be out of existence. Uh, you fund the network, you support us, you allow us to continue to expand here at InfoWars. So it's all down to you. And again, you can, you can share the Pasco with 10 people so you can wake people up with this tool of information. So please subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. I'm gonna to go to break now, but coming up, Jakari Jackson talks to the author of White Girl Bleed A Lot, Colin Flaherty, about the rise in black on white violence and why it goes underreported in the media. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, 
forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Colin Flaherty. He's a journalist for World Net Daily and also the author of White Girl Bleed A Lot. He joins us now via Skype. Thanks for joining us, Colin. Honored to be here. So tell us a little bit about your book and what prompted you to write it. White Girl Bleed A Lot, the return of racial violence to America and how the media ignore it, is about an epidemic of black mob violence all over the country. I wrote it because I kept seeing, uh, kept reading these accounts in newspapers of teenagers blowing off steam or having a little fun, and they kept happening over and over again. Then I saw what they were really doing on YouTube, and what I saw on YouTube, for example, in Philadelphia, I saw a thousand black people running down the street, pulling people out of cars, going into restaurants, stealing stuff, destroying property. There was an enormous gap between what the newspaper said was happening what was really happening. I kept asking reporters what was going on. They kept saying, nothing, nothing. That's when I knew I had to write a book about it. So uh, anything in particular, Any? give us the highlights of the book. Well, uh, let me see. The, the, the one story that surprises everybody is, uh, is well, the, the, the book documents over 500 cases of black mob violence in over 100 cities, not just the big cities, Detroit, Baltimore, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia. But how about places like Peoria, Springfield, Illinois? Mm -hmm. How about Des Moines, Iowa? The Iowa State Fair, 2011, uh, three nights in a row, black mobs beat up white people in and out of the fair. They were calling it Beat Whitey Night. So finally, a couple reporters went to the police spokeswoman and said, Lori Lovarato said, Lori, what's up with all this? Is this, uh, are black people beating up white people? She said, I don't know why it's happening, but yes, it's happening. She got fired the next day day for mm. telling the truth about racial violence. And so multiply the Iowa State Fair times 500, 600, 700, 1,000. And that's what the book is about. So why do you think this disparity is when we have uh, a particular racial group that not being uh, portrayed adequately or shown adequately as far as the violence that they inflict? You know, when I turn on cable TV networks, I see a million explanations for what we're talking about. So it's interesting. The liberals, on one hand, deny it's happening, but on the other hand, in the same breath, they always explain how why it's happening. So I don't. In the book, I don't do causes. I don't do solutions. I also don't, don't do apologies. So I know the how it's happening. I keep documenting how, but I don't do the why because you know what? I don't know why it's happening. Well, let me ask you this: uh, We're talking about maybe uh, things being underreported. Have you ever uh, encountered a situation in your investigations of maybe something being trumped up to be a racial attack when maybe it's not? For example, let's say uh, two guys are involved in a car accident, one may be white, one may be black. Uh, you know, a road rage situation occurs and these guys get in a fist fight, and maybe that's reported as a racial attack instead of a road rage incident. Have you ever encountered anything like that? Well, when I do encounter, uh, when I do encounter over-reporting of racial violence, Probably 99 times out of 100, it's, uh, it's, it's misreporting of white violence against a black person. Listen, here, here's every, 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 uh, every, a lot of the crime, most of the crimes I talk about do not feature somebody carrying a sign or uttering racial expletives in front of witnesses. Um, that's what happened a couple of days ago in Brooklyn. Ten black people pull, beat up a couple of white people at a, in, in broad daylight muttering expletives. Most of my stuff is not that convenient. So what I do is I just show this pattern over a long period of time, how black mob violence exists exponentially out of proportion. And so every incident by itself is really insignificant. But once you string them together, that's when there's only one conclusion, which is there's something strange going on. And I'm not 100 percent sure what it is. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's the, the incidents are, I mean, look at Friday. Friday at Howard University, the oldest and, you know, most venerated black college in America. Um, they had a race riot at Howard University on Friday. When I say had a race riot, that means everybody involved was black. There was a concert, uh, the, the, the star of the concert was 2 chains for, uh, 
for 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 people who aren't fuddy duddies like me, I'll remind people: Two Chains' biggest hit is "Start a Riot." Last time I looked, it had 12 million hits on YouTube. Probably has 13 now. Mm -hmm. So YouTube's uh, so Two Chain is on stage at Howard University at Homecoming. A uh, bunch of people. The concert was sold out. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are outside trying to get in. Couldn't get in. They started hopping the fence. They started breaking the fence down, fighting with police. Eight or nine people went to the hospital, including two cops, one broken leg. Question, did you hear about that? Not until this morning. I was actually researching uh, our interview for today, but that's my first time hearing about it. It's very, uh, I will agree with you there that it was very uh, underreported in the news. A couple of days before that, same thing happened at Virginia State University. Homecoming, two to three hundred black people rampaging through the university, beating people up. Somebody got stabbed. One person got arrested. This is a very, very long list. But when you say uh, a race riot, was the either one of those situations where the people targeted any specific racial group, or was it just happened to be a large amount of black people or whites or whatever? Uh, see, I don't say it just happened to be. I did. I used to say it just happened to be until I started researching. And finding out that when this happens, it's exponentially out of proportion. And that's the only reason I could write the book, because there's an enormous amount of videotape now. And so, were they targeting white people? Sometimes that's the way it works. Uh, sometimes they target Asians. Sometimes, uh, sometimes um, uh, uh, gay people. Sometimes old people. Sometimes young people. Sometimes other black people. So, it's, uh, sometimes the mobs are small. Sometimes they're big. But there's always one thing, the central organizing feature of much of this violence is that the people involved are black, exponentially out of proportion, many on video. And uh, that's why I wrote the book, because too many people and newspaper business were have way too invested in not talking about it. Okay, well, our time is short. So just tell us where we can find your book and your other works and what else do you have coming up next? Uh, my book's easy to find. It's at Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's at the uh, uh, Infowars.com store. I, I, I write for uh, my my stories primarily appear at WND.com. They also appear at uh, Infowars front page. American Thinker. Thomas Sowell just wrote a big column about it. Let, my book last week. Alan West posted it on his Facebook page saying, "Finally, a reporter who's tough enough to look at these stories." There's a lot of stories out there, and nobody's talking about it. And our psych the psychiatrists tell us we're only as sick as our secrets. There's a lot of sick things in this country masquerading as normal. That's what this book is about. All right, Colin Flaherty, White Girl Bleed A Lot, thank you for your time, sir. An honor to be here. And you can pick up a copy of Colin's book, White Girl Bleed A Lot, at the InfoWars shop. So make sure you stop by there and check out our other great products as well. And also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Ranch, the Special Reports. And don't forget when Obama Deception 2 comes out, it will be right there on PrisonPlanet.tv as well. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.